Hi, I'm Lee Strobel. Welcome to Faith Under Fire. When it comes to tough questions about faith, the Trinity is right there at the top. Christians believe in it, Jews and Muslims don't. But the real question is, does the Trinity make sense or not? Does it stand up to scrutiny or does it crumble under close examination? We're going to find out today through a debate between Rabbi Tovia Singer, he's a radio host on Israel National Radio and author of the book Let's Get Biblical, and Dr. William Lane Craig, a research professor of philosophy at the Talbot School of Theology and author of the book Philosophical Foundations for a Christian Worldview. Tovia, let me start with you if you don't mind. Uh, the Jewish faith believes in a monotheistic God. What exactly does that mean? You know, the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, the, Almighty, the first thing the Almighty says is, Thou shall have no other gods besides me. Scripture says that God is not a man in Numbers chapter 23. So therefore, we have a, a direct misora from God that there is one, and as the Almighty says in Isaiah chapter 43, 44, 45, uh, that there is no other, that God shares his glory with no one. Okay, let's uh, pick up there, uh, uh, Bill, and talk about the Trinity. What is it exactly, and why is it important to Christians? Well, I think it is importantly to begin first by defining what we're talking about. The Trinity is the doctrine that uh, in God there are three persons, three persons in one being. And why is this important to Christians? Well, because it's true. Uh, it means that Jesus Christ is God. Uh, he is equally God with the Father, and that the Holy Spirit is also God, equally with the Father and the Son, and that these three are distinct persons, but all uh, God, and that they carry out different roles in the plan of man's redemption. The Father sends the Son. The Son dies on the cross to atone for our sins and bring us into reconciliation with God. The Holy Spirit gives us spiritual life and sanctification for living uh, a life pleasing to God. So all three of the persons are involved in daily Christian living. Okay, Tobia, you disagree. Why? I'm an Orthodox rabbi. We believe that the Hebrew Bible alone is divinely inspired and is absolutely trustworthy. And therefore, it is these texts that we look to to say, what does God say about his nature? What does the Almighty share? And all you do is look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. You know, these are the first words that a, a little Jewish boy, a little Jewish girl learn. Um, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Why don't we have a clear text anywhere in the Hebrew Bible that gives us the Nicene Creed, the very clear statement of a triune doctrine? It's found nowhere in the Hebrew Bible. Our salvation depends on worshiping God in truth. Truth, and therefore, let's look at the Bible itself. That's a fair question. Bill, how would you respond to that? It seems to me, uh, you know, we're, it, it comes down to the question of, is the New Testament trustworthy? Does it contradict, though, what the Old Testament is saying? I think that's exactly right, Lee. We're coming at this question from two different sets of Scripture or uh, wholly inspired writings. And I would agree with Tobia that if you approach this question simply on the basis of the Hebrew Bible or what we would call the Old Testament, one wouldn't come to believe that God is a trinity. But if you approach this from the writings of the New Testament, which uh, I believe are equally inspired by God, then the doctrine of the trinity is taught there. And so uh, I think it will depend on which scriptures you look at to see whether or not God is a trinity. And I would say furthermore that the doctrine of the Trinity is not in any way incompatible with anything revealed in the Old Testament. Okay, Tobia, how would you respond to that? Think about this for a moment. That means from the time of Abraham until the time of the New Testament, talking about 2,000 years, or from the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai until Christianity, uh, first century, we're talking about 1,300 years, the Jews, you can see, knew nothing about a trinity. God warned the Jews throughout all these centuries, worship me in the truth. You admit that they would have no idea what that truth is. Abraham spoke to God. He didn't speak to a triunity. You believe that if you don't believe in the gospel, you don't have salvation. How is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David saved without the Trinity? Isn't it more likely, isn't it clear that the Trinity was unknown to anyone and it's a product of a Catholic Church, which I frankly am surprised that Protestants follow? They're saved by responding to the revelation that God had given to them. And if they respond to it in an appropriate way, then uh, according to the New Testament, God applies to them 
the benefits of Christ's atoning death so that they are saved through Christ even though they have no conscious knowledge of Christ because they respond to the revelation that God has given to them. So I, I don't think we need to be di distracted from the issue of the Trinity into talking about issues of religious uh, pluralism or exclusivism. I think that's quite a side issue. Okay. We're going to take a break. Uh, Tobia, when we come back, is going to try to convince us that Jesus Christ didn't think he was God and that the authors of right. the uh, New Testament uh, didn't believe he was God either. And so I think Bill's going to disagree with that. Stay with us. You're going to want to see that in just a moment. We're talking about the mystery of the Trinity with Dr. William Lane Craig, a Christian who believes in the deity of Christ and one God in three persons, and Rabbi Tobias Singer, who believes Jesus was just a man and that God is just one, period. So, Tobia, you know, as I read the New Testament, what I see is uh, four teachings, pretty clear, that, as I understand it. Number one, that uh, Jesus is God. That Number two, the Father is God. Number three, the Holy Spirit is God. And number four, there is one God. So as I read that, that's how I understand the Trinity as a Christian. Now, you say that Jesus is not God. He is not equal to God. On what basis yeah. do you make that claim? Oh, no, of course not. But this is silly. The Messiah, have made it clear, is not God. He has to fear God. Why would the Bible say that God is not a man, yet uh, Bill is saying, yet the, the church is saying, the Pope wants you to know that he is a man. Why would the Bible say that at the end of days in Jeremiah 16, that the Gentiles, that means you, Lee, and you, Craig, are going to be coming to the children of Israel and say, you know, teach us about God. We have inherited lies and vanity. Well, the answer is that you guys need to get on with the radical monotheism. Know that there is God alone. There is no progressive revelation when it comes to commandments. All 613 commandments are clearly in the Torah. A progressive revelation could be about information that's not necessary for salvation, like the resurrection of the dead. All right, let's let Bill respond to that. Bill, the, the whole well, question of Jesus' divinity is crucial to this. So why do you believe it, and how do you respond to Tobia? It, it, it's absolutely crucial, Lee. It is, it is the person of Christ that forced these monotheistic Jews... All of the disciples and apostles were monotheistic Jews. It was the person of Christ that forced them to think about Jewish monotheism and to see and discern within the Godhead a plurality of persons. That is to say, God took on flesh in the person of Jesus of Nazareth so that Christians believed that Jesus was truly man and truly God. And you cannot disprove that he's truly God by quoting passages which evince his true manhood. You know, I, I think that when, when people teach that Jesus was God, I think that really you're disgracing Jesus because certainly he had never intended, never dawned on him that one day these Catholics would make him into a deity and worship him. Christians are terrified of considering that Jesus wasn't the God because they're afraid they're going to go to hell if they don't worship Jesus in truth. And I implore them, just go yeah. back to the text and go back to the Hebrew Bible because that's the okay, source Okay, Bill, when you go to God. the text, Bill, what do you find? That's my question. Well, when you go to the text, what you find, for example, is John chapter 28, where doubting Thomas sees the risen Lord, and he falls at his feet and says, my Lord and my God. And Jesus says, uh, blessed are you because you have believed, uh, and blessed are those who have not seen me and, uh, and yet believe. Jesus blesses Thomas for that. So the doctrine of the deity of Christ is forced upon us by the New Testament, it's, and I think it's forced upon us by the claims of, of Jesus himself. Let's move on to the question of the Holy Spirit. That's the third person hmm. of the Trinity, according to the Christian belief. Um, the Holy Spirit would be who to you, Tobia? Well, you know, <laughs> you know to, to a Jew, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, is the dynamic force and presence of God. What's critical is it's not a separate person from God, but it's his dynamic presence. Okay, Bill, is the Holy Spirit a force or is he a person? <clears throat> I think it's clear in the New Testament that the Holy Spirit is treated as a separate and distinct person. For example, in the baptism of Jesus, you have the Father speaking to the Son, saying, this is my beloved Son with whom I'm well pleased, and then he is anointed by the Holy Spirit. And in various passages in Scripture, it will speak of God the Father the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, putting the three names uh, in order. And it's not a redundancy. Different roles are ascribed to these three persons. So 
I think the Holy Spirit is treated in the New Testament as a distinct person who would come after the ascension of Jesus to carry forward the work of Jesus in this world. Okay. Um, Tovia, is it possible that uh, God would have a new message, an unfolding message for his people? Is that at all possible to you? The Bible says clearly that God wouldn't play a trick on us, not tell us the truth of his nature, punish us for not worshiping him properly, and then going, ha ha, I didn't really tell you, here's a Christian Bible 2,000 years later. I mean, honestly, how was Abraham saved? Why would God call him his friend if Abraham didn't worship the Trinity, uh, if Daniel is God's friend? And beloved Daniel chapter 9, okay. why would God keep a secret yeah. from these we're, we're, great We're running out of time here. here. Let me just ask Bill if you could answer the question that uh, was just raised. Is this a trick that God played? Absolutely not. And many, many Jews today believe in Christ as their Savior. One of the most rapidly growing segments of Judaism is Messianic <laughs> Judaism, which yeah, is fully Jewish, in Hare Krishna, but, but that doesn't believes tell believes in anything. Jesus as Messiah. So yeah. I think be, yeah, be, believing in Christ is the most Jewish thing you can do. Let me tell you, Jews follow all the craziest things in the world. Doesn't mean I'm going to shave my head off and leave here in the middle with a tambourine and go to LAX. <laughs> Jews okay. follow everything. No. It's only a minority, a, a small group that follows the truth. I mean, the fact that Jews worship in Jews for Jesus, that's a sad truth. But uh, it has nothing to do with God. That's a reflection of sin. Well, they seem to suggest it's something else more of a, fu of a fulfillment of what they've known uh, in the uh, Hebrew Bible. Told you, as you know, I've written a book. Go the case for Christ sets out the evidence that uh, convinced me when I was an atheist that Jesus is divine, that the Trinity is true. And so I hope you'll understand if I remain a Christian after this. But I want to thank you for offering your perspective. Thank you. Bill, I want to thank you as well. Thank you. Um, I've enjoyed the discussion. Thank you. For those of you at home, I want you to stay with us. We're going to be right back with some more interesting debates on faith under fire. <laughs>